I'm Krista Toller. Here's Lindsay Marr. And she really recently was on vacation at a beautiful tropical location. She's just not now. No, We're both wish we could <laughs> both be there. <laughs> it's snowy. <laughs> I know. Oh, it is. So it's total opposite. So we're glad y'all are here for the first design style of 2024. She has some really fun ideas to use on terracotta pots and she will tell you all about it. So I'm going to let her just go ahead and start and throughout the day or the evening, depending on the time zone you're in. Um, we will do some trivia questions. We like to do that during dry time sometimes. And um, we have lots of fun things to talk about. And we actually have people from literally all over the world. I was just telling Lindsay, we have people registered for this from all over the U.S., Canada, France, Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Belgium, Italy, France. So pretty impressive. You know, that, that just blows my mind. That's so cool. Everybody loves to see you. So, <laughs> welcome. Yeah, and I, will, I don't get to see them, but I like to have them here. <laughs> that's right. But they'll be watched. Some will watch it later. Some will watch it now. So go ahead. I love it. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, signing up for tonight. I'm really excited to be teaching this project. Um, I, like Krista said, I just came back from a tropical vacation. I was in Barbados, which is a beautiful little spot. Um, unfortunately, I did get sick. So if at any point my voice starts to crack or I start coughing, that's just why. So I apologize in advance for that. But uh, yes, I'm very excited. This is a fun project that we're going to be working on tonight um, and painting on terracotta pots. So whether you are a paint your own pottery studio or you're just an independent um, ceramic painter, terracotta is a great option of like just a new product product to kind of introduce different clay body rather than, you know, your typical white. Um, so we're going to be painting on terracotta pots tonight. I've got one design that we're going to be painting tonight, but you're also going to get the design technique sheet uh, for another project as well. So the first one, this is this is the first little cutie. So this is a terracotta pot that I got at Home Depot. Um, I think these ones, I'm in Canada, so these ones were about $4 Canadian, this size. Um, so this one is my design that I called Coral Beach Party. And it's kind of like those Matisse, like paper cut kind of style um, coral shapes that are just lots of fun, bright, colorful um, glazes. I also did it on the same pot same size, uh, just different size of the design. So just mini kind of corals, bigger corals. So that's not the one we're doing tonight, but you will get the technique sheet for that so that you can offer that in your studio and you're welcome to change up the colors, find another color palette that that you like better. Fine by me. I love, I love to see what people do with it. So this is actually the pot that we're going to be painting tonight. So this is, I'm, I'm calling this uh, Turtle Beach Party. Um, and I was really inventive with the title of this one, but uh, the top glaze here is one of Mako's new jungle gems, which is called Peach Party. Uh, so obviously I just went beach with that. Um, so this is the product that we're going to be working on tonight. We've got Mako Stroke and Coat and uh, Jungle Gems as well. Um, but before we get started, I kind of want to tell you a little bit about how I chose this design because it's really fun. Um, actually, sorry, I have one more too. I have the option that you can do fish if you'd like. So I've got the little fish and then I've got the little turtle. Um, so the inspiration for this piece uh, is behind a place that's in Barbados that's called Earthworks Pottery. And I went there for the first time in 2014 when I was in my visual arts program in uh, Camosun College, which was in Victoria, BC. And we went there and one of my dad's friends was living on the island and he was sailing buddies with this guy that owns this pottery studio. So I was new to Barbados. I didn't really know much about it, but he said, you got to go check it out. Like, it's just so cool. So I went and I had no expectations of what I was going to see. Like, I kind of thought it was just going to be some guy that did pottery. This is like a full blown business. They ship worldwide. Like you can get stuff shipped to you before you go back on your vacation or you can take it with you and they box it all up. Um, but Earthworks Pottery, it's been there, I believe, since eight, 1981. And it was originally started by this man's mother. Um, he's kind of taken over and it is just everywhere on the island. It is on address signs. There's uh, beautiful mosaics along the beach. Um, it's in every gift shop you can imagine. It's it's just everywhere and it's so beautiful. Um, and you get to go to their um, studio, which has like a retail section in the front and it's got all sorts of pottery, bowls, plates, um, mugs, sugar containers, jars. I'll I've got pictures that I'll show you. 
absolutely everything. But then what you can also do is you can go and like walk through the production studio as well, which is really cool. So we got to see people um, throwing pieces on the wheel or for some pieces they have like a press mold. They have like those giant, giant kilns where you like pull the shelves in and out. Um, just so much going on there. And like, you can tell it's been there since the eighties because there is just so much clay dust everywhere. Uh, they even have like a little cat that like lives inside the studio. It's really cool. So you can chat with all the people there. They're super friendly. So I'll give you a little kind of tour of this place before I get started painting, because it's, it's, it's one of my favorite places to go visit. Um, I wasn't able to get there this year because I got sick, unfortunately. Um, but let me give you a little uh, view of Earthworks Pottery. So we're just going to, I'm going to make this my full screen. So there's obviously the two projects that we're doing. I was able to take these two pots with me um, in my suitcase and I got to take some awesome pictures of them on the beach. Um, I didn't want to take all four of them though, because they weigh a little bit too much. So I just got the two there, but that's the, pro the this is the project we're going to be doing today with the turtle. Um, and then this is the one with the coral shapes that you'll be able to do as well. So these are the colors that we're going to be using today. Um, how I kind of chose that was I picked um, the two jungle gem colors, and then I kind of went and found other stroke and coat colors that I thought worked well uh, with the jungle gems. So kind of like the orange happy, Caribbean blue, sun kissed. Uh, the jaded color is not actually in those jungle gem colors, but it was one that we, um, that I picked based off of the other pieces from Earthworks, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so that's the colors we're working with today. Um, we can't see the colors. It's just it's just saying present. I think you actually it's not oh, actually so showing mean. those slides. <laughs> so sorry, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but I wanted to make sure we could see it all. Okay, can can you see that? It's because I see it. And it's saying it's sharing my screen. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna undo that. There we go. Now it works. Okay, we'll just do it this way then. Sorry about that. Perfect. We can see it Sorry now. Everyone. Okay, here it was just rambling okay. on. You can't even see it. Um, okay. so I'll just go over that again. But these are the two jungle gem colors, blueberry bubblegum and peach party that I'll be doing uh for the larger terracotta pot today. And then I went and picked out similar stroke and coat colors of the gems that kind of blossom in the kiln. So Caribbean blue, orange happy, jaded, and sun-kissed. So first of all, let me show you. This is this little studio. This is Earthworks Pottery. Um, they mosaic absolutely everything. Uh, like their entire exterior of the building is mosaic, even like the stairway up to their studio is mosaic, um, even like the little knobs on the handrail, like it's all, all pottery that they've made over the years, which is just so cool. Um, since they've opened the studio, like to the right over here, there's like a little art gallery where you can go and purchase like other local artists work. Uh, so here it is just on a sunnier day, a sunnier time when I was there. So it's just so cool. Like they've got full, here I'll zoom in a little, just so you can get the, you can fully appreciate it. Like uh, they got tiles there for the Earthworks name, and then they've got like full plates, just like mosaic on their walls. So there's those little fish, which is uh, where those designs came from on the one terracotta pot that I did. And then uh, I mentioned that I have the jaded color for the turtle, which I don't actually have in those, we don't have in those jungle gem colors, but you can see that's a color that's quite popular in their glazes. So, oh, this is me, this is at Earthworks. And this is just like outside of their building. Like this is the parking lot. But I mean, this plate is massive, it's beautiful. Um, and they just take all of these pot pottery pieces that, you know, maybe it's a piece that didn't work out or there was a glaze issue and they just break them up and they mosaic them everywhere, which is really, really cool. Um, so this is the inside of the studio. So you can see here, I was talking about how a lot of people there have like house address signs. Um, and so they're, you see them everywhere. And like, it's such distinct writing and colors that you just know it's earthworks, which is really cool. Um, but they have some, some designs that are kind of like their core style. And then they just let some of their artists that work there um, kind of do their own thing too. So it's always cool. It's always worth stopping in to see uh, all the new stuff that they have. But like, I think if you can see this orange bowl down here where my, uh, my mouse is, like they have, they make like sinks, like that's the basin of the sink. So like they just do so much. It's really, really cool. 
this is just a close up again of one of the murals that or it's like a divider wall, I guess, in the parking lot. Um, but just oh, so beautiful, beautiful colors, terracotta clay, of course, which is where my mind went with this. Uh, here's some other pieces. It's really cute too. They have, um, I don't know if they have like school groups that come in and they get to make pieces, but uh, there's a little, I don't have a picture of it, but there's a little shelf that has like little kids figures that like actual field trip kids have gone in to make. And I don't know if they just don't pick them up and they sell them. I don't know how that works. That's pretty. It's really cool. Um, so there's a little pretty little mandala dot, dot, dot dish. <laughs> um, that one's really pretty. These are those little jars I was talking about. So that blue color is like a, just a go-to for them. But to find colors like this orangey pink, uh, it kind of fluctu like fluctuates the color based on, you know, how much glaze they have on there or the type of clay. But they're all just so, so beautiful. So this is the pile where all the rejected pottery goes. So I can't even imagine how many pieces there are throughout the mosaics that they have um because they're all over Barbados but they just had this big back area where all the rejects go and they get broken up and they get reused which is kind of cool so this is the boardwalk um it's along the beach obviously um but this is one of the big murals that they did which is really really cool um and that's obviously where I got the inspiration for this project uh because I love that the jungle gems with those color bursts in there it almost looks like the mosaic pottery so that's where I was like this is just the perfect thing to do um but it's really cool because this um this mural is actually for reporting turtle hatchings. So if you see a turtle climbing up or walking up onto the beach to lay eggs, you can report it so that they can come out and they can protect the area. Um, so it's just so cool. So they've got like little signs on there and um, information, like numbers to call, but they're just so beautiful. All the colors are so bright, so Caribbean too, so Barbados. Um, it's really, really fun to look at. Because every time I look at it, I see something more. And or if you just even zoom in on part of that mural, like this turtle, it's got so much detail. It's beautiful. Uh, but this is kind of the whole idea. Like if you look over to the right here, there's like a turtle hotline. These are all of the partners that uh, worked with making this mural. And it's just so cool to look at all of those individual little pieces broken up and put, it on, put on there. So if you are a Paint Your Own Pottery Studio, you may have noticed that I've done a design similar to this. And I chatted with Krista about this, but this was my first attempt with this project. And let me tell you why this did not work. <laughs> so uh, this was actually a project that I did with Duncan Ceramics before they um, closed up. But this was a piece that I did while I was in quarantine after I came back from Barbados after COVID hit. So we were literally flying home to Toronto um, from Barbados with no masks, no hand sanitizers, like just hysteria everywhere. Um, and I had two weeks to quarantine in my apartment before we could go out and do anything. And I had to do this project for Duncan. So I thought, you know what, this will be great. This is like, I'm so inspired by this. Well, let me tell you, these are all color chips. So this is not a jungle gem glaze. These were individual color chips that I applied one at a time. And I thought, yeah, this is a great idea. I'm, I'm in quarantine. I've got nothing to do for two weeks. And then I offer this to them for them to have people do. And then that's where my mistake was, because not everyone was that bored for two weeks. <laughs> so... So I needed to kind of almost redeem this project because I do think it's really fun. It's really beautiful. But that project is way too time consuming. So thankfully, Mako, when they acquired the color collection from Duncan, they brought back Peach Party and Blueberry Bubblegum, which are the two jungle gems that we're using today. Um, and they still get the same effect with a way less work. So that is why you may have recognized this design, but this is a much more painter friendly option of doing it. So I'm very excited to get to teach that. Um, I was saying to Krista too, when we hopped on earlier, was that everywhere I've gone recently too, I see terracotta pots everywhere. Um, so it's just a sign that like, this is terracotta pot season. So if you are a paint your own pottery studio, uh, you could definitely get terracotta pieces in your studio on your shelves for people to paint. Uh, they do recommend that you just take those terracotta pieces and just do a bisque firing them in your kiln just to ensure that they've been properly fired. There's no you know, 
air bubbles or gases or anything left in them. So these are some of the selections that I found. Again, I'm in Canada, so selection might vary based on where you are. Um, but this photo up here is from Home Depot. So you can see this kind of like graphite colored one and then this like muted terracotta one, which I think they technically called like bleach terracotta. Well, I have tried and I have best fired and glaze fired both of those types. So that's really cool. So you can get those and offer them in your studio for others as well. If you want to have some sort of different option for them, um, those are all ones that will work in your kiln. So I have a photo of the um, kind of the graphite one that I'll show you in pieces I fired. Uh, this sun and the moon, those were pieces that I found in HomeSense out in Canada. So those ones are really cool. They were really, really detailed and they're just really good. Um, like they had like spots for hooks so you can hang them. So you can see based by the color of them, this moon I bisque fired and then I did um, the details on it. After I had done that, I found the sun one and I just thought, mm, I'm going to be lazy and I'm not going to bisque fire that one first. So I didn't have any issues, thankfully, but you can tell there's a difference in color. So this one's just not got in into temperature as high as the moon. So that's the difference in the color there. And then this big guy is from Costco. I saw it the other day and this is a terracotta pot and I believe it comes with like the dish underneath as well. I could be wrong, but this thing was like 50 centimeters in diameter. It was huge. And I think it was like $25 Canadian. Uh, I mean, that would probably be the only one you'd be able to get in your kiln. So that one might be a little bit too big. Um, but over on the bottom two photos here, these are ones that I found at Ikea. So these guys are definitely include the drip tray and the pot. Those guys are 25 and they're kind of that like bleach terracotta color. Um, so those ones are available. And then these are the smaller terracotta pots that they had um, at uh, Ikea as well. These guys over here on the little shelf. So there are lots of those out there. So if you ever have like a supplier issue where you can't get product in, or you're just looking for something different to offer your customers, terracotta, and it's pretty much available year round in some places. So um, definitely worth just looking into at least. Now, these are two pieces that I've done myself. Um, so this is a planter that I have in my front yard. This is that kind of carbon or graphite uh, terracotta kind of pot. And I bisque fired that one. And then this is just plain French dimensions on it and beautiful, perfect. Uh, this is a terracotta dish. Um, so this one, most times I use terracotta, I like to be able to see the clay body. So I don't put um, too much paint on it, or I don't, um, clear glaze it because the clear glaze does alter the, the look of the terracotta, but this piece, because I made it as like a bird bath, um, I did put a clear glaze on it. So it's significantly darker than just like a plain body terracotta, but because Mako is so wonderful, look at this. They've already gone and they have tested their low fire clear glazes on terracotta pots so that you can get an idea of what they'll look like. Um, this I found on, I think it was just on their Facebook page. So if that was something you wanted to go look for yourself, um, but they've tested crystal clear, clear one, matte transparent and pure brilliant. So um, lots of options for clear glazing. But again, I just like having the porous pot, which is how you would use it anyways, if you were to buy it um, and not fire it. Um, so I like to be able to see the, the orange clay body. So that's what we're working with today. So today, now I'm done talking about all that, <laughs> um, but now we can, now we can start painting, which is really exciting. So um, like I said before, the pot that I got, this was from Home Depot. Um, it almost looks like an ice cream kind of paint container, which is really funny. Um, so this is the one I did my samples on, but the one that I'm going to be painting on today is probably the most common terracotta pot shape, which if you're painting along, uh, this might be the one that you find or you one that you have. Uh, so we're going to paint on that. So I'm just going to just move things around here for just a second because I'm on a very small desk. <laughs> So I've got, and you all got as well, uh, this is the printout of the design. Um, so this is the design that we're going to be doing today. So 
it's interesting too, because I, I may have gotten my scales wrong based on the size of it, but what you can do is you can, I like to do the tissue paper transfer method, um, which I will obviously show you how to do. But if you ever run into issues where, you know, you think this design's too big, like let's say any design, if you find it on Mako's website, you can just edit the size that you print it. So you can print it at hundred percent or 90 75, 50, whatever. And then you can kind of get it to work for um, the piece that you have. So the first thing to do is with a pencil, I've got a piece of tissue paper here. You can use any color really. Um, lighter is better just so that you can, you know, see where you have drawn. But I've got my printout. I'm going to put my piece of tissue paper on top. And then I'm just gonna go over the design lines with pencil. And this is what's gonna help me get my design onto my pot. So it's really cool when we go into Barbados, um, I go with my boyfriend and his family and they've been going there for years. My boyfriend's granddad used to work i don't know if he worked for the canadian government there or the barbados government but they work to give uh local students grants to go to university in canada so they lived there for a while so his grandparents or his grandparents lived there for a while so his parents would go down and stay there for a bit when they were our age and they've just been going back ever since so it's a really beautiful island to get to go to um they stay right beside the yacht club and it's a pretty it's on a public beach, but it's pretty private because it's towards kind of the end of the beach. Um, but you can see all the cruise ships come in. There's like catamarans and other little boats <clears throat> that go by. Um, so what they've got kind of out front of where we stay is they've taken old boats and they've sunk in them as like a tourist attraction. So you can pay to go out and snorkel and see the turtles and stuff. So uh, we went out one day. Again, I got sick, so there wasn't a lot I was able to do there. Um, but the one day we went snorkeling, uh, we saw a bunch of turtles and starfish, which was the first time I'd seen them there. So that was really exciting. Um, my boyfriend thought they were tuna, but we were too shallow. So I don't know if they actually were, but there were some really big fish that were swimming around us. Um, and nothing gives me anxiety, like an open ocean where you can't see as far as other big thing. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah not we get to see all the coral and stuff washed up on the beach but uh where we go snorkeling it's still too shallow so there's not a whole lot of coral but lots of beautiful fish and beautiful colors all right so i have now got my design drawn onto the tissue paper i i like this method i know there's also mako has the graphite transfer paper i like this way because you can see a little bit better um, where you've already put things because this is transparent. So if you need to, you know, place your design at once and then move it and add it again, um, you have the ability to do that so you can see it. So the original pot that I had had like a really thin rim. Uh, this one's a little bit thicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this water line and I'm just going to kind of line it up with the edge of that so that I can use the peach party on the top and the blueberry bubble gum on the bottom. So the way I'm going to do that is just with a Sharpie. And this Sharpie will burn off in the kiln. It will burn away in the glaze firing. So it will not stay. But all I'm going to do is just draw these shapes on. So I might do the little waves up to the edge of that lip and then then have the bigger ones go up higher. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to trace that again. Now, Krista, while I do this, would you like to start with some trivia about terracotta for the peeps? Sure. Okay, let's see. We like to do trivia and we think it's quite fun. So we are going to start with, and you can put your answer in the chat if you want, down at the bottom. Um, so that's how we can answer. And then sometimes we'll do prizes. Sometimes it's just for bragging rights. So this first one is for bragging rights. <laughs> so what does terracotta translate into in Italian? So if you know, you can put it in the chat. 
or you I can like guess. doing this like I like doing the trivia questions too because I I learn them to put them in Microsoft and send to you and then I forget them so it's like I get to uh, yeah, it's like over again. <laughs> Well, I will tell you since nobody's asking, nobody's answering. It and the answer is baked earth. In yeah. Italian terracotta means baked earth, which is very appropriate. That's which seems right. quite literal once you like right. hear <laughs> once you That's hear right. it, I speak Italian. Yeah. So here's another one. What is the most unique trait about terracotta? It's kind of the reason Lindsay was firing it first. Mm -hmm. It's good for plants because of this. All right. There's some quiet people tonight. No chatters. But I'll chat. Okay. So one of the most, un the most unique traits yeah, about terracotta is its ability to draw moisture out of soil. So that works out nice. General in charge of the Alabama National Guard. Okay. Um, there we go. So I've got all of my wave lines drawn on to the top there. Um, so now what's kind of cool too is, like I said, because this design is like a little bit too big, <laughs> um, I can just play around now. So like I don't have to have such a big gap between the turtle and uh, the water. I can kind of move it up closer. So this is going to be a end up being a big turtle, but I'm okay with that because there are some big turtles. Um, we saw one a couple of years ago and like, I swear this turtle was like as big as I am. Like it was so long. Um, and I'm not, I'm not the best, strongest swimmer, <laughs> let's say, especially in open water, like an ocean. Um, so the first time I went there, I was snorkeling and I had my hair down, which was mistake number one. And then I had a bathing suit that had like strings on the side. So we were snorkeling and I felt something brush up against my legs. So of course my mind automatically goes to like, oh my gosh, it's an octopus or something. So I went to turn around, but because my hair is down, it gets all in my face and I freak out and I swallow so much salt water. <laughs> my boyfriend saw the whole thing and he's like, what are you doing? Oh, that's so funny. So I, that was like the one thing last summer I challenged myself. I was like, Hey, I need to get better at, at my stamina at swimming so I have worked on so I felt better this year and then I got sick so no more snorkeling <laughs> for me <laughs> all right so I got my turtle on now I'm gonna add some coral oh I should have added turtle trivia darn I didn't think of that oh yeah I didn't think about that either well if anybody has any turtle trivia you can put it in the chat uh, well I did learn one piece of turtle trivia from frozen 2 and it's that turtles can breathe out their butts oh yeah that's interesting <laughs> it's interesting isn't it <laughs> yes i did not know that one I'm gonna see if i could find some over here kind of silly that they put it in a kid's movie but i like that. yeah right <laughs> so now i'm gonna add my little fish which these little fish are similar to the ones that were mosaic on the wall outside of the earthworks pottery so like they actually sell plates that look like these little fish so i think that's really cute that they that is cool that So if you're a potter and you're looking to go on a vacation, what better place than Barbados where you can do work and play? <laughs> that sounds great. I think so. Anybody else been to Barbados? I've never been. I have a friend that used to love to go there. It was like where he would surf. Ooh. Yeah, there's lots of um, lots of cruise ships that come through. Mm. A, lot of, um, a lot of British people as well, because I guess it's uh, close enough for them to get there. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, the cool thing about this coral pattern is it can just be kind of however you want it to be. However you want, yeah, be, absolutely. Yeah. So I've got my whole design on there now, transferred on just like that. So that's kind of easy too if you wanted to kind of. So if you want people wanted to play around with their design they can kind of do that themselves um you also will have that printout of which i didn't print out silly enough because i didn't use it um but the the other one um oh my gosh where did I put it? these ones 
these little coral shapes. Um, these ones, there's a design printout that you can have as well. So you can add like more of these shapes to it if you want. Um, but that's what's fun about this is you can do it however you would like. That's right. Now I'm curious though, design. if there's anyone painting along tonight or is everyone just watching and getting inspired for later? I can't tell. So lots of some people have most people have their cameras off. Mm -hmm. We're so used to the old days of Zoom when we would have our <laughs> yeah. cameras on, and then we learned how to turn them off. Looks like we have a lot of people watching and enjoying. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I'm happy to paint. So I've got. It's funny, Krista. You were saying you were eating fruit before, and we've got orange happy, blueberry bubble gum, and peach party for our glazes. Excellent. You're eating the perfect food. <laughs> That's right. I was. My um, blueberries and everything else. Yeah. Oh, and I've got, I've got my turtle color. So I did on my turtle, um, jaded, but let me show you on the pot. From afar, it's kind of hard to see the jaded color because it's, I mean, it's, it's different, but similar enough to the blueberry bubble gum that it kind of gets like you kind of see this orange part before you see the fins and the head. So if you're looking for a different option, I'm going to try doing awkward tonight, which is uh, stroke and coat 96. Aw awkward. Am I saying awkward? That? Yeah, you got okay. it. Awkward. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try that one tonight. It's very similar to Jaded. It's just a little bit lighter, but it might make it pop a little bit more. So I'm going to try that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with all the little details. So I'm going to do the coral colors. I'm going to do the turtle fins and the head. I'm going to do the little fish. And then I'm going to leave those two um, jungle gem colors for last. So I'm going to do the little details first and then paint around it. So I have another dollar on my well, Here is Sorkin Coat 76, which is Caribbean blue. Now, Krista, I was curious and I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So Mako's got lots of fun names. Is there someone at Mako named Kara? Kara? Is that, is that why it's Kara B in blue? No, it's like the Caribbean, like the Caribbean Sea. Caribbean. Caribbean. Like we, some people say Caribbean, some people say Caribbean. So it's that. I there was someone named Kara. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at the moment. Oh, bless my heart. We get together and have in our new product development meetings, and then we get to name them. So we just kind of throw names out. So I've named a few, you know, and people. I think I was something. thinking a little too much on that. <laughs> <laughs> there could be. Maybe there was at one point. Okay. Well, maybe when Caribbean. But that out. makes way more sense than what I was thinking. Yeah. I didn't work there when that one came out. So I don't know. Maybe Kara yeah. was there. I think that's my first time using this blue and it's a beautiful color. Yeah. It's a good one. Nice it's a nice bright one. Nice and bright. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I've got my colors in my tray here. So again, I've got, uh, Stroke and Coat 76, which is Caribbean Blue. I've got Stroke and Coat 6, which is Sun Kissed. And I've got Stroke and Coat 50, uh, which is Orange Happy. So that one is pretty similar to the terracotta color. Um, but I kind of like that because it almost makes it look like you've got wax resist there and you can still see the terracotta through it. So I thought that was kind of fun. So I've got a selection of different brushes that I kind of always use. Um, I prefer working with round head brushes, um, especially on doing these corals, like they're the perfect shape. You can kind of just do like a, if a blob of paint and then pull it back and you get that nice kind of teardrop shape. Uh, so I've got that. And then I also have a liner brush too. So if I need to get into like the fine detail things from so that, bam. I've got that brush to do that. So I'm going to get started with what color should I do? I'm going to do the Caribbean blue. I'm going to put that on one of the corals. So I've got on this piece, I've got one, two, three pieces of coral and two fish. So I guess I'll do one of each color of the coral of the Caribbean blue, sun kiss, orange, happy. And then for the fish, I will do, hmm, I'll do a blue and a yellow. So what I was saying before, like why I like using the rounded head brush, um, you can kind of just do like a teardrop and then pull back. So the higher, like the straighter you hold your brush, the thinner the line you're going to get. Um, but that just kind of works perfectly for, for coral shape like this. Um, 
you've got those kind of really rounded shapes at the top and then it kind of thins out towards the bottom kind of similar to like a flower petal but this color just flourishes on this terracotta I think they work so well together so I've kind of got my like coral shapes and then I'm just going to kind of go and fill back in round out kind of like the edges where each piece meets There we go. And then because this terracotta is also so porous, it dries really fast too, which is nice. So there's my one piece. I'm just going to smooth out some of those bigger blobs that I have, let that dry, and then I'll go back and do a second and third coat. So everything that I'm painting today, I am going to be doing three coats. Um, I am like a notoriously light painter. So <laughs> I'm trying to get better at being more consistent with three coats instead of having to do four. Um, but I'm gonna let that one dry. I'll just grab another brush and I'll move over to this side and I will paint the yellow and orange corals. So same process. I'm gonna do the um, sun-kissed one on this back piece of coral and then a darker color on top so that if I do any overlapping, it will cover over that color or the lighter color without issue if I need to. But Mako is also very good at painting like with coverage of light colors over dark, which is nice. I like how you're applying that like a flower. You know, it's so cool. It makes it so much easier to fill in. Yeah. I think it just helps if you like break down each shape of mm -hmm. each yeah. component of a shape, if that makes sense. And and then it's just a little less work to have to paint all of these little coral things if you do it that mm -hmm. way yeah especially if you use a bigger brush too oh geez I just put my finger in the blue like if you I if I mean you could if you wanted to and I typically like doing it but painting with like a little brush <laughs> it mm -hmm. would take you forever but you get like right. really, really crisp lines so yeah you let the brush do the work that's right exactly so this is this is just a little faster way of doing it There we go. So there's my sun kiss one. I'm just going to kind of smooth out the bigger blobs that I have. Let that dry. And then I'll move on to the orange you happy. Another brush. Grab the perfect amount of brushes. So my actual painting lines end up being a little bit bigger or thicker, I guess, than the actual design on the template, which is okay. You don't have to follow it exactly. Yeah, that's the cool thing about this pattern too, is it can be, you know, doesn't have to be perfect. Nope, not at all. My kind of design. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So I've got my three corals. I've got one paint or one coat of each color. So now I will get, oh, I spoke too soon. Oh, I don't have water though, so I'm just going to wash one of these brushes. And then I'm going to do um, the awkward on the turtle fins and head. Sorry, I'm just rearranging everything here. There we go. So similar to the coral, like the the edges of the turtle fins kind of have those same kind of like ruffled edges. So I'm just going to paint those kind of the same, same way, almost like a flower petal. Just make sure I don't put my hand in the paint that's drying. There we go. So you could do like use like a more green color too instead of like a teal if you would like. But I like this one because it kind of works with the glaze color similar to other pieces at Earthworks. So we have quite a good collection of Earthworks pottery from going over the years. I had a mug, but it broke. <laughs> 
we have like a really cute uh, sugar dish that looks like they're called, I think they're called chattel houses, um, which is like a really common style out there. Um, so we've got a little sugar pot that looks like one of those. Um, so like the roof comes off, which I have also broken, but I fixed it. So it still works. <laughs> It just, it's, it looks really cute, but it's like, if you reach your hand over it, it's so easy to knock off, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but uh, I fixed it. So it's still functional. Uh, and then I have like this little sea urchin kind of vase. And then I have a little bowl as well, but I could come home with so much more if I really wanted to. Kind of how it works. You got to bring it back. <laughs> right. I have come really good at become really good at traveling with pottery though. So there is that. Actually, I did get stopped at security <laughs> when I was going down to Barbados because I had the pots in my uh carry-on. Oh yeah. And they were like, Do you have ceramics in your bag? I was like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I saw someone posted, I don't know if it was convention or like some kind of event, but someone went somewhere in there and they had silkscreen medium in their carrier oh, yeah. bag. <laughs> yeah. have to explain it's it's not narcotics. It's, yeah. it's silkscreen medium for pottery. <laughs> there we go. So I just break up kind of each bump on the turtle fin as like a little petal kind of shape. And there we go. There's our little turtle. So I'm gonna leave him to them to dry. And yeah, maybe we could do some trivia while I let those dry, Krista. That's okay. Right. Let's see. Hmm. What is the most famous use of terracotta clay in art? Did anybody know this answer? If you don't want to put it in the chat, you can unmute yourself and say it. But if not, I'll just tell you in a minute. I have to make you think for a little bit. Mm -hmm. What is the most famous use of terracotta clay in art? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to tell you. It's the terracotta army. It's in China. It's just, you want to tell us about it? Do you know a lot about it? Me? No. <laughs> um, I learned, I learned what I learned from Googling about it today. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there are, there's another question too in there, but, um, it was discovered oh, yeah. by accident. Like there was no historical note of it. Like yeah. it was just completely a, a complete surprise. And it was found by, um, I believe Chinese, like local Chinese farmers that just found it on the land. That's and cool. But well, here, I mean, there's a lot. So how do you know that there aren't more? <laughs> right. So here's the question. How many, how many pieces were found in the terracotta army people? Anybody know? Oh, wait, here's a chat answer. Let's see what they said. Oh, flower pots. Nope. It was terracotta army, but thank you for playing. So Robin says 10,000. You're close. It's 8,000 soldiers and 520 horses made out of terracotta and they were like life-size and they They're were all huge. giant yeah. room. Yeah. yeah and I think I saw I read that um the majority like because there was 8,000 like they had molds for some pieces like maybe like mm -hmm. you know the chest plate or something but each one had its own individually carved face or like more detail into each piece which is just crazy like the pictures of it is is quite eerie to look at like it just goes it, like all of these terracotta armies are just they just stretch on forever in the space that they're on display yeah uh, man what a discovery that would probably scare me if i was just digging and <laughs> terracotta soldier yeah. and just eight thousand more it's so cool if you just like search for it do just search for terracotta army it's really crazy looking yeah, so you guys have learned some historical information by coming to Pottery Camp. Okay, so when, oh, you said it was discovered by Chinese farmers, but does anybody know when, what year it was discovered? I never would have known. I don't even know if you, I don't think you said this, but. Nope. Anybody know? Okay, it was 1974. Which That's like from cool. when they were built, like that seems like, like, how are they not found sooner? <laughs> right, right. I guess the farmers were just digging, you know, and found mm -hmm. them. Yep. So crazy. 
Okay. All right. Well, yay. We yay. learned new things about the terracotta army. That's right. All right. I'm just kind of like sitting here swinging my pot. <laughs> dry. Um, I'm just hoping I don't like let go of it. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do a second coat of each of the coral colors as well as the turtle. And then once those are done, oh, I forgot about my fish. Oh, look at that. I start talking and I forget what I'm doing. Well, I can do it now. So for the fish, I'll bring out the pot that I have them uh, painted on and I'll kind of show you what I did. But um, you almost need to do the details, like the shape of the fish first, and then you can go back either with the tissue paper transfer or just sketch it on with pencil, but like the design detailed lines on top. Um, so I'll show you when we get to that part, but uh, I think what I might do is I'll just, I'm gonna paint in the shape of the fish and then I'll go back in and add the lines over afterwards um, for on top. So it's got kind of got like, it's got like a little smiley face and it's got um, scales that uh, we'll go and add in with another color, which is how Earthworks does it. So the first time I went, which was again in 2014, um, and I remember that so well because there was the Olympics going on. <laughs> um, so that was the first time I went to Earthworks and it was when they were doing being commissioned to do um, in the financial district, they did a mosaic along that way. And it was really cool because the man that owns it, his daughter is also an artist. So she got to help kind of design this mural with her dad and then work on it which like and I think she's I think she's younger than I am so I mean she would have been quite young when she did that too um but that's pretty cool to like be a part of um but the other thing that we did when we were there in 2014 was we went to the I think it was the previous owner of the Ottawa Senators owned a bar in Barbados and it was called hockey night in Barbados. <laughs> well, it was called Burt's Bar, but I think it was also hockey night in Canada or hockey night in Barbados. Um, and we went to watch the hockey game there and we also wore our jerseys in like 30 degree temperature. So <laughs> that was fun. All right, now I'm moving back on to do my second coat of Sunkissed. That looks like a nice layer. Good job. Thank you. I'm You're really welcome. trying to be better that, at that. <laughs> There's been too many times where I have to go and refire things because I'm just too light handed. I'm just I think I'm so worried about glaze crawling that that's why. Yeah. But. Well, I think that's a good point to bring up is that, you know, to really load your brush. That's a better mm. that's, mm -hmm. that's the way it's made, you know. Really load it so you get good coverage. Yeah. It's especially easy to load a, a round brush like that, you know, and the script mm -hmm. liners too. Yeah, these ones I just find I gravitate. I have a lot of mm -hmm. square headed brushes, but I don't they don't get as much use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me either. I really use the script liner a lot. Yep. And then the fan, the soft fans. I love a soft yes, fan. Yes, me sure. too. I have um many. <laughs> I was cleaning out <laughs> our too. I was reorganizing our basement again the other day and oh I found a whole bunch more. After I ordered some, <laughs> of course. I, I forgot about them. Oopsie. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't go bad, so it's fine. They'll get used. Right. I'm going to now, I'm going to paint this little fish here. I'm going to paint him yellow. Yeah, I think it's good that, you know, because I tend to get in a hurry when I'm glazing. And so it's nice that you have something you can just keep the whole project going the whole time. So if you're in a studio, yeah, there's always something another they part can do. Yeah. yeah, there's always another part to work on rather right. than that's really that's a great thing. There. Yeah. Right. 
which is obviously why that first time I did this project with the color brush crystal chips, <laughs> no one wanted to try it. And I don't think I, like how silly of me, but I was just stuck in quarantine for two weeks. So I was like, this is great. Other people stuck at home will want to do this too. <laughs> You're nope. a very detailed person too. I'm crazy. <laughs> so if y'all haven't seen Lindsay's website, is the website Lindsay Mar Studio, right? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, you should go to her website because the details she does on pieces like with clay is just amazing. I mean, just go to her website and check it out. She actually sent me one of her pieces that has little hydrangeas on it. And the little, it's in my china cabinet. And the little Aww. flowers are just like tiny little delicate, perfectly, perfectly thin flowers layered. Oh, just beautiful. Oh, thank you, Krista. Yes. Oh, um, I, I think that's, that's what I like best about clay. Obviously it's such a like shapeable medium. Um, but I used to embroider before I did clay. So I kind of wanted to find a way to merge like clay and embroidery ideas. So that's where I kind of started with making all those little clay beads, which yeah. <laughs> why I do that. I don't know, but oh, I, do no. I, I like once I'm like into the process, I like doing it, but I dread having to do it. <laughs> But that's usually like I do it this time of year when things are quieter and I like kind of build up my collection for the year and then they just mm. totally extinguished after Christmas and then I just make them again. So yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of where I'm at now. Lots of tedious little designs, but yes. beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm really excited too because I am selling my pieces in a store in Edmonton, but I also just accepted to sell in a store in Burlington, Ontario. They opened a location there, which is where my studio was when I owned my paint your own potter studio. It's where I grew up. Um, so it's kind of cool. I worked in that mall like retail when I was a student. So yeah, it's really cool. Oh, how fun. Yeah. Now did you bisque fire your pot to cone 04? Yes. Okay. Yep. And they That's just what I was yeah, they just go, asked, I was putting that, but I wanted to see what you had done as well. Yeah. Yeah. They just go right in the kiln. They don't have to be stilted when you're bisque firing them. Oh, mm -hmm. my dog just came back from a walk. So she might be jumping all over me. You might hear her. <laughs> Hi, Basil. She was really funny when we got back because when we went, I was away for a while. And so my boyfriend looked after her and then his parents looked after her and then <laughs> Uh, they went away and then his aunt and uncle were looking after them so she just was bounced around so I don't think she was like super excited like she was excited to see us but I think she was also a little miffed that we left her uh yeah like what are you doing back yeah, she got over it she's fine yeah I'm sure there we go okay second coat of color so I just had to do a second coat on the uh two fish there but everything else has got two coats we're almost done on that and then we can move on to the um Ugh, jungle gems that's, that's yeah funny. so when I made these samples I was out of the um wax resist that Mako offers um so I painted around each little element which was kind of tedious but if you have wax resist available to you then I would definitely say go for it um you I, I think the reason I also left room around some of the pieces, like you can see on the turtle here, like there's, you can see some of that bare bisque shining through. Um, I wasn't sure with the terracotta color, like, or the jungle gems, if they were going to mix too much. So I didn't want to get them too close. Um, I think, you know, between these two jungle gems, I see they don't, they don't drip or anything. They don't run into each other, which is really nice. Like these are kind of stable jungle gems. Um, so you could probably get a little bit closer or just use wax resist and paint over each of these elements and then just be able to make your life easier and paint that background color faster. Um, but again, because this is porous, um, this get dries very quickly, which is nice. So, um, that makes your life a little bit easier too. But the other thing, and I kind of, I don't mind it. Um, but this one, I think it's just because it's so cold. <laughs> the the uh, glaze did craze a little bit on the top, but I, I quite like that because that was a very common thing that I noticed on the glaze surface of um, the Earthworks pieces. Um, but I, I like it, actually. Yeah, and the, cr the crystal glazes can do that for sure. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. something that's good for people to make note of too, right? Like, yeah. don't be freaked out when that happens. That's, that's right. just all part of it. The nature of that glaze. Yeah, and I think what's my favorite thing about Jungle Gems um, I mean, I have a lot now from all the work that I've done with 
with uh, with Mako and just my own personal collection of glazes is their website, how you can see what it looks like fired at cone 06 and cone six, which is just so mm -hmm. helpful. I love that it's, you know, if I, if I needed to, you could use it for a higher or a mid range firing. Um, I love that. It's so functional like that, but the colors do change, but that's why you guys do the tests, right? Right. And there is in the glaze combination gallery, you can also see oh. every month will feature mm -hmm. a different glaze. And I can spend all day. Glazes. Yeah. We do it I with our low fire and with um, mid range glazes. Yes. You, you guys all do your work and your research and I love it. It's so, I love seeing all the color combinations that you come up with and just the fact that you take the time to do that. Yeah. Saves your customers so much time and money and guessing. <laughs> well, that's the thing too, you know, cause our glazes, like all we say low fire glazes, but they're really, you can fire them to any temperature. Like these can go to cone six. They're just yeah. going to change. So that's why on yeah. the bottle, it says, Cone six or you know, mid range results, and then on the website too. Yeah, I just think that's brilliant though. Yeah. Now I'm I could be wrong, but um, when I was looking up, because I always have a moment, I I have had no issues with terracotta pots, like putting them in my kiln. I don't think anything of it. But then of course, as soon as I go to do it for Mako for this event, I was like, oh my gosh, what if it's not terracotta? What if it melts or blah blah blah. <laughs> <laughs> so in the middle of the night, when I was thinking about this, I I googled it and. I could be wrong, but I thought it said that some, that terracotta could be fired up to cone six. I would be a little worried about that because I would really worry it would actually melt into a puddle, but. Yeah, I don't know. I guess you have know to about be that. really I careful. Yeah, yeah. Um, it did say cone, um, it said cone three or four. Hmm. It's like the highest that this temperature, like this clay body could be fired to, which like that seems still pretty high, which is kind of crazy that it can go to all of those yeah, different it does, doesn't it? temperatures. So I don't want to be the one to test that. <laughs> yeah, me <laughs> either. else wants to sacrifice that, that, that would be great, but no, I wouldn't ask anyone to do that. That's, that's nerve wracking. Yeah, for sure. So now I'm just going to go back and do my third coat because these guys are dry i like the little halo that you know do a painting around the shapes or putting the wax resist around it i think that's a nice little you know letting that terracotta show through those little mm -hmm. areas yeah and i mean i like that because of what it what this design is inspired by which is mosaic right. where you get to see yeah. the kind of break in between each piece so yeah i i thought for this project oh, perfect yeah <laughs> um, that's great. you could certainly do wax resist if you wanted mm-hmm but I like your little one too, that just has the designs, you know, so you just see the terracotta They make a nice little set that way. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll show everyone else, but I was showing Krista that. So these two pots, the large and the small, these are both from Home Depot, but you can see like how much darker the little one turned out. And they were both the same color when I bought them. They were both this like orangey color, but now this is kind of like a bit more darkened and brown. Um, which is interesting because when I did the bisque firing, they both came out the same color. It wasn't until I did the glaze firing that this one really darkened. So I'm, I'm curious as to why, I don't know if it's because I've added a glaze on top of it. I don't, I don't know, but cause you can either. kind of see, yeah. you can see, but like around the edges of this, um, this piece of coral with the peach party, like right around the edge of the, the background is it's darker. So I don't know if it's just because. No, that wouldn't make sense because this one has one. I don't know. I don't know why it made darker, but I like it. <laughs> uh -huh. I like it. So I have a bunch of uh, in our backyard. And they're still there because I'm very well, I always plan to bring them in before the winter, but then winter comes so early in Calgary. So yeah. my terracotta pots sit out year round, which I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> um, but I have a bunch out on the patio where, you know, I've just gotten different sizes and I just added um French dimensions and foundations to them and they look beautiful and it's just something different than all the like store-bought right options like you could really do your own thing um I think too price point wise um especially if you got them at like the dollar store which I know are they can be a little iffy just because they're lower quality um but I mean if you were a paint your own pottery studio and you're doing school groups or something like that's a really inexpensive way to offer paint your own pottery because I know you know some schools or daycares or whatever like they've got lower budgets so you don't have a lot of room for material costs 
Um, but that would be a way to do it. I mean, you would have to consider doing the bisque firing as well, but just something different. Yeah. Um, and you can get little ones like almost this size, but it has like the thicker rim like these. Um, I mean, I went to the dollar store the other day and I think just because Valentine's day is over and now it's Easter and spring stuff coming into the shelves, but there is just terracotta everywhere. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you could certainly stock up and you, I mean, you could do a paint night with it. You could do March break or um, spring break, break camps with it. Um, you could do Earth Day parties with it. Uh, you could do theme nights, like whatever you want to do. Like there's just, it's it's a versatile piece of clay, but it's just a different colored body, which is kind of cool. So if people wanted to have those at their house with plants in them, it just takes it from a plain terracotta pot to a painted terracotta pot. Yeah, something different. It just mm. looks really cool on a terracotta. The colors look nice. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's just it's, fun too, because I mean, after like there aren't many terracotta pieces available from suppliers. Right. So this is just oh, I got a big blob. Um, it's just it's just fun to be able to offer something else. Yeah. Very nice. Alrighty. Well. I'm just going to move on to my turtle. I've got to wash my brush. But all the coral's done. I'm going to do one more coat of the fish. And then we can start on the uh, jungle gems. Yay. Oh, that's going by fast, isn't it? It does go fast, which I like. Because you can, or, you know, if you wanted to do a paint night, you could mm -hmm. offer a price, like a set price for like a big pot like this one and a little pot like the other one where people could paint two. And have one be just the coral and the other one be like this more kind of a designed one um, and just, you know, work one color at a time. So go and do all of the sun kiss pieces on or like graphics on each piece and then just kind of work your way back and forth between. So you're like painting all the time, but you're working on two projects and um, it kind of dries in between. So, yeah, I like that. And they're easy enough shapes, right? Like it's not like something super detailed that would take you forever. Yeah, it's comfortable. That's a great one for a paint night. I think it'd be fun. It's, you know, easy enough to do it without getting stressed out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can kind of like turn your brain off, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So does anybody know, here's another trivia question. Does anybody know where terracotta clay is most commonly used? Two locations in the world where terracotta clay is most commonly used. And I'll give you a prize if you get it right. Ooh, upping the ante. Mm -hmm. So you have to put the answer in the chat. Ooh, Robin has a guess. Robin says China and Mexico. Anybody else have guesses? Mexico. Who else? Oh, okay. Well, the answer is Mediterranean and South America. So that's it blows my mind. You, would, I would think Mexico too, and you would really think China because that terracotta army. That's an awful lot of terracotta. Right. But I guess yeah. It's been for a while. Yeah, <laughs> I guess it's not as current. Yeah. But so the answer is Mediterranean and South America. Very interesting. All these Google tips we're finding. Yeah, I really had to look <laughs> this time. <laughs> You did great. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I can't believe I didn't think about doing turtle trivia. Ugh. It's okay. It's so, it's uh, like when we were snorkeling and you, you just kind of like watch them. It's so like ethereal. Like it's like this thing was alive when the dinosaurs were. And it's just happily grazing on the seagrass doesn't it's even really care about them. Oh, they're just so beautiful. They're talking about jungle gems because we Ooh. have lots of things we can say about those. Yeah. But generally with jungle gems, we don't put them on a food surface because of that crazing that you saw on your pot. Mm -hmm. And they have that surface texture to them, you know, not perfectly smooth because of the little crystals in there. So I say it's better not to put it on a place where you're going to have food. So if you're going to do like a 
a mug, put it down below where your lip would go, you know, put um, on a pot or a plate. Like if you did a plate, you could do it on the rim, but you just don't want to put it where the food's going to go because it's too hard to get it clean. You know, bacteria can get mm. down cracks or that surface texture. Yeah. And if you do it on like dinnerware pieces, there's still lots of, you could, like the, well, would you, would you recommend putting it on the bottom? I know it's not like a food surface, but would, if there's got that crazing, would it hold bacteria in it? On the bottom of a plate? Yeah. I probably wouldn't because then you have those crystals and you're trying to, if you're doing a low fire piece, you're firing it on a stilt oh, and that crystal could point. melt down on it. So I would, good and I would save the crystals for the part you can really see. Good point. Yeah. What's your favorite jungle gem color? Hmm. Goodness. That's a tough <laughs> question. I do love one of the new ones that Pete, um, Gary Tart. I love pink. So that's, mm. out of the new ones, that's my favorite for sure. Yeah, I like that. What I don't, the purple, is it purple rain? Yes. That's new been one? so popular. I love that one too. Yeah. And I love day lily. It's nice and bright. It's the low mm. fire version of amaryllis. We made a stoneware glaze at amaryllis. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. And so we have a jungle gem that is day lily. So they look alike. Because if you fire daylily to cone six, it would look different. Right. Yep. All right. I'm just shaking up my my peach party. So, Krista, what do you do? Because sometimes I've read to to not shake your bottle before you use it, and then scoop out the crystals or the the jungle gems from the bottom. Um, but what, like, what, what do, what do you, how do you do it? I've heard, I've heard that too. Like when I had my studio, I would hear they'd say the first two coats just you know, paint the color on and then mm. the third really shake it up and put the crystals on. But now I, and you know, that's one way to do it. I've heard people do that. And that's a good thing too. Also, if you have a, maybe a piece you're worried about it sliding or something, but I like to just mix it up really well. And mm -hmm. then I will pour some onto a, a, pay, a plate or some kind of cup or something like that, a palette, because that way I'm going to get better distribution of my crystals. So I'll stir mm -hmm. it up really well pour it out there. And like even the small bottles, like the four ounce bottles, the crystals can fall down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I like to store them upside down. Oh, that's smart. It keeps them suspended. Then you can also, you know, whenever you're starting a new bottle, shake it up really well and maybe take a, a paintbrush or a spoon or whatever that can reach down to the bottom, depending on what size bottle you have mm -hmm. and get all the, the crystal glazes mixed back into, or the crystals mixed back in. So there's really no wrong way. It's just two different ways people have done it over the years but the way you're talking about the one you mentioned first you get less crystals on there which is also another design element or if you're if you have customers that are like you know major crystal hoarders <laughs> tell them not to do it that way you know yes yeah I guess just for this one like I, I wanted them a little bit more spread out um, yeah yeah it depends on what you're yeah doing. I guess you could do it however but hey you could I just wasn't sure too. like, I was, I was just worried if I had too much, it would run, especially because I've right. got other, other, other elements on it. I didn't want mm -hmm. it like dripping over them. So yeah, exactly. I, just, I mean, I think it's just like automatic. I pick up a bottle of paint and I shake it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I do too. I think it's best. Yeah. Well, and I, I'm, I mean, you're smart. You store yours upside down. I don't. So if I go to use a bottle that I haven't used in a while, I always have to shake it to get the paint towards the opening yeah, as well. Yeah, shake so, it or stir, and stir it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to move this up a little bit higher. There, there you we go. go. And I'm not going to get bumped into it. You can kind of see some of the snow outside. That's our deck out there. Yeah, how nice. Yeah, it's been beautiful, though. Like, we had family day on Monday, which is like a holiday. And it was... It was like plus plus 10 and we went out for a really beautiful walk it was lovely but when i left calgary it was like minus 45 with the wind chill oh which is wow. just horrible <laughs> like it's horrible and when we left um my my brother had a baby and his wife had a baby in november or, or december so my mom and i were going back to meet him and we had a really early flight so that we could spend more time with him during the day there. And so it's a four hour flight from Calgary to Toronto. And I fell asleep for two hours and I woke up and I was like, Oh, great. We're halfway there. We had not even left yet because they needed to de-ice the plane. <laughs> and there was some valve that was frozen shut. Oh <laughs> it's no. It's a really long travel day, but that's okay. Oh gosh. Yes. But I was still just glad to be inside the plane yeah. not out on the tarmac trying to. Yeah. Oh, get Imagine working in those 
no in that um, weather. Brave souls. Yeah, they are souls. So I am now just using the peach party. I'm doing that as the turtle shell. So I'm going to do three coats of that as well. So I'm just going to apply that. And yes, you do want, and I know this is silly, but when I had my studio, I would notice so many people, like when their piece, when it was dry, they try and like flake off the crystals. I'd be like, no, 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 that's, you want that there. That's, that's, what's going to make all that magic happen. So um, yes, you need that there. I know probably studio owners would know that, but I was always surprised by how many people would try and brush them off. So obviously the more color or the chips that you've got on your piece, the more will explode. And that's why too, like if you shake it up and then you do three layers, like you've got three layers worth of chips that are being added. So right. I just thought it was kind of cool because it kind of looks like the design on the back of the turtle shell. Yeah, definitely. A little bit more use of uh, that um, peach party color. So I'm going to just, because I'm waiting for other things to dry, I might as well just get started on um, the top part of my pot, which is the peach party. And it's going to be kind of like, I guess it's technically the sky if it's above the water, but it's going to be orange. So uh, I'm going to do the peach party for that. So I'm just going to pour a little bit. I just use like the lid of the, the glaze, but I also am not a studio, so I don't have multiple people using it. But like Krista said, if you are a studio I would pour it out into like a little dish or something. And then you don't have to worry about cross contamination or anything like that. So I'm just going to start by using um, the liner brush so that I can get kind of like those little swirl colors, um, those outlines. So I just kind of go around, get that fine kind of wave point filled in. And then you, I just like to kind of do that for my first, um, my first coat, just so that I know where I'm putting color down. Uh, I use a fan brush, like on the larger parts, like up here, but you can use like these rounded brushes too, as like around those areas to fill it in as well. Whatever you would like to do. So I thought it would be really cute too. I mean, you could do this project and do the design the other way, like upside down. So like this is the top of the pot and then you could get one of those little um, dishes and make a little bird bath. So that could be like a cute camp project or a paint night kind of idea. That's very fun. I like that. We did those a lot at our studio for camp ideas because it was just... It was inexpensive and it was time consuming because there's two pieces that they needed to paint. Or I've seen other places where they just stack a bunch of pots, um, like terracotta pots to make it taller. And then um, you put the, the dish on top as the bird bath. I had the bird bath, which I had in the, um, I painted a bird, like, like a dish that I did as a bird bath that I had in the slideshow. And I was gonna bring it inside but it's got water frozen in it. So <laughs> I was going to show you in person, but <laughs> I did not. I do like stacking this together to make different things. I used to make fountains and things with all the different Ooh. bisque shapes. How did you make fountains? Um, you'd have to drill holes in the bisque oh, before you create cool. it. And then you'd get tubing and get a fountain pump and just be like a oh big, gosh. a big bowl or something for the base, you know? Oh, that's super cool. And so that like you made those and sold them or that was something people could come into your studio and do? Uh, we would do a class yeah. in the studio. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. That's a really cool idea. Yeah. I really want to make our yard more like pollinator friendly. So um, I've seen like little dishes that you can make as like a, a bee bath or like not a bath, like just for them to drink out of. Oh, cool. Um, a bee yeah. bath. Sounds funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the other one that they're, I mean, typically it's made out of wood, like with like bamboo, but it's called a bee barn and it's for mason mm. bees. Um, and they like, <laughs> I got one for my dad. They're really cool, but you put them on like a sun facing wall 
and the, they lay their eggs in there and then they like fill it in with dirt. So then you store them in your garage or somewhere over the winter and they hibernate mm. in that and then they come out in the spring hatched. Hmm. Um, but maybe a way of doing that, but yeah. Yeah, we have a really big backyard at our house in Calgary, but it's 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 kind of boring. So, <laughs> so I needed to add some color. So there's lots of terracotta back there now. Uh, I've got a bird feeder that I made from terracotta. Um, what else? I've got that little bird bath. And then my hope is one day to build like a shed out there that I can do all my clay stuff in. So mm, it's not that'd be cool. Tiny little house. <laughs> yeah. So watching you with the, the crystal glaze, it's like, makes me think about there's different ways to use the jungle gems, the crystal mm. glazes, because yes. You know, like you're using it in design, just using a certain section of it to make your design. And then you're going to, you're actually going to be using it as a background too, you know? So mm -hmm. it's cool to use it in design like that. And then some people will use it just like as an accent, like they'll have a, a whole design of stroking coat or something or foundations and then add just a little bit of that just for a little something, you know, like mm -hmm. the center of a flower or something like that. And then some people do it like it's a really good idea for people that don't know what they want to do. They can just yes. put three coats of a jungle gem on something and it'll look really cool mm -hmm. or layer. Like you can also put jungle gems down and add some stroke and coat on top and let that move a little bit with the stroke with Ooh. the jungle gems or layer jungle gems. So there's lots of fun. And that's what we were talking about too. Like in the, the glaze combo gallery, there's lots of good ideas in there. Oh, that's cool. I don't I'm think I would have ever thought of putting stroke and coat on top of jungle gems. Yeah, you can do that. You can put... Because if some of them would have translucent backgrounds mm -hmm. or lighter. And so if it's a lighter background, you could always kind of change that by using a stroking coat underneath it or on top of it. Oh, that is yeah. so smart. Lots of fun things to try. Well, it's just things I've learned. Yeah, no kidding. So that's what we call it, art in a jar. Because you can just do, make, just use simple things like three layers and it's beautiful. Mm, yeah. And like you said, like if you have people coming in, if you're a studio and people come in and they're like, I'm not an artist, I don't know what to do. Perfect right. option for them. Right. So now I'm just using one of the smaller fan brushes. This is a number four. Uh, and I'm just going to go and fill in those extra spots with the peach party. And it's nice because while I'm doing this, all of the coral colors down below are drying so that I can finally add the uh, blueberry bubble gum to the bottom. And like we're almost done, which is like a, a pretty quick project. Like it looks like it's much more detailed, but it's it's a pretty quick project to do, which is nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's good to have a project that looks really looks more involved than you think and then mm -hmm. it actually is not that, that long especially for like a paint and sip if you were doing something like that right yes because if you know well whenever you host those people get talking and they get distracted and they forget what they're doing right, right. how many coats they've that. done yeah yeah there we my go. tip so for that is like marking on the on the pot just putting a little pencil mark you know one oh, two three true. because then you can see or like if you're going around like on a bowl you will mark where you started Oh, that's very smart. Yeah. I remember when we used to do um, like Christmas tree paint parties, because that's really easy to forget mm -hmm, what you've done. Mm -hmm. um, we would put it on like a piece of paper towel and then on the piece of paper towel. Or no, how did we do Yeah. We put it on a piece of paper towel so they could like spin the piece mm -hmm. of paper towel and then do like the very bottom of the tree last. Um, but we would put like a colored pipe cleaner in one of the holes so that you knew like, okay, I started Oh, that's yeah, because I know some studios will fill each hole with pipe cleaner. So it would be like mm -hmm. all white or something, but one would be red or green or something. And then that way you would know, OK, I started on this side and I worked clockwise. Or oh, so smart. That's a good idea. Yeah, because that that is a that is a project that you can totally forget where you've painted. And I oh, had yeah. to refire a couple trees for people because they just got completely lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. where they were painting. So. All fun things. But yeah, there's so many, so many smart things like that studio owners all know. I think mm -hmm. my favorite tip, and I, I, it was so silly that I just had never thought of it before. But when we had people come into our studio, we would always give them paper towel to dry their brushes off on. Um, but one woman had um, like little face cloths. Oh, yeah. And I was like, why? Why did I think of that? Like, that's so much easier, more absorbent. And then you're not getting as 
much. Yeah. I mean, you have to uh, take them home and wash, but uh, that's right. okay. But if they're small, you know, you don't have to do them that often, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, and then smart. I know a lot of studios too will just use like sponges on their table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. I'm just letting this dry a little bit before I go back and add uh, a second coat. Yeah. Well, talking about jungle gems, um, you can use them obviously with stroke and coat. We talked about, you know, you could do a stroke and coat design or a foundations design and put the jungle gems on top. You can layer them with each other, mm. um, but you can also use them with elements. And so that's another one of the glaze combo things you can see on the website is layering with elements. will give you a really cool look too, something totally different. So that's something else fun to think about. Oh, there's just so many ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> can, they all play honestly, well together. Sometimes that like delays me in getting started because it's like, mm -hmm. no, I have to like know that I've seen every possible option. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I don't want to miss out on anything. So mm -hmm. that's right. That makes it hard to decide. It does. But I love and I think. I think the one element that was my favorite was fern. I think that one was discontinued. Mm -hmm. It was. It's such a pretty but one. I also one. like um, lavender flower too. Oh, yeah. I that just saw that on my shelf today. Oh, yeah. Lovely. That's a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. I'm more, I'm, I'm, it's so funny. Like you can always tell, like if you do your own personal, like, like what kind of like phase you're going through, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I went through a phase where I used a lot of terracotta kind of colors and then it went green and then it went blue and it's just yeah. fun to look back at and, and see kind of where you were at. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's like the best way of, of describing that is just our house. Like when we moved in, everything was white and so we were like oh let's just keep it white for now and then we'll figure out what kind of colors we want and now I'm at that point where I'm like okay there's too much white <laughs> yeah so it's fun to get to uh, get to pick it but uh we've got a really old house so there's a lot of there's a lot of paint <laughs> it's like all the doors and like the frame and the tr like doors um or sorry window frames or door frames mm -hmm. like there's just there's so much paint. Our stairs were painted white and they were so slippery when we first moved in. And <laughs> we didn't have like a handrail, which oh when we did the walkthrough, the contract or the home inspector was like, yeah, you would definitely want to have a handrail. And we're like, okay, no problem. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. I think like the second day after we moved in or something, I went flying down the <laughs> That handrail got put in real quick. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Yeah, but they're the, the old stairs and the, the, the end of the trail or the stair kind of like round. So if you are not paying attention, you just slide right off. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. This is looking good. I'm going to let those little fish dry a little bit more and then I'll, I'll do one of them um, just so you get the idea of how I do it. But let, oh, let me show you my pot. So I did one pot that had just the fish and the coral and then I did another pot um with the turtle so this time I'm doing both so I'm doing them all mm. in one so there's those little fish so that's the details that I was talking about that I'm going to add afterwards oh right um, which is just kind of like the outline of the fish and then some scales a little smile but yeah this just makes me so happy because if you're in a cold climate this is a good way to add some warmth <laughs> Yes, definitely. And if you want, just stand by your kiln while it's firing and protect it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's a plug for um, Scott Kilns because I have a Scott Kiln mm -hmm. and I just got the Kiln Link. I got the Kiln Link upgrade thing and put it on my kiln. And you oh, can like look the, like the, the electronic app. one. Yes. If oh. y'all don't have that, you should get it because it's so is, jealous. <laughs> it's so, I mean, because my kiln's not here. It's at my dad's house. And so, you know, if you're, if it's in your studio or somewhere else or whatever, it's so cool because you can look and see what the temperature is like while it's going, you, it'll tell you when it's done. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, not shutting off. And then, you know, afterward you get the whole report on how it fired, you know, um, and then it, does it say like how much it cost? Think? Yes. It's so oh. cool. Oh, that's brilliant. But yeah, yeah, it's very my cool. kilns in my boyfriend's parents' garage. So that mm -hmm. would be very because there have been many nights where I mean I've fired my kiln so many times and 
I know I do it the right temperature, but then it's like right. the 3 a.m. Like, oh my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great, that's, great product. That's handy. Yeah. So here's a funny, kind of embarrassing on my part uh, story that I can certainly laugh at now. So you're all welcome to do that as well. But when I first, um, like I, I took over the, my paint your own pottery studio from another owner. So everything about firing and kilns was all new to me. I had done a visual arts program, but the kilns were only operated by like the techs and the te the profs. So we never actually loaded things in. We never scheduled like programmed a kiln or anything. So that was all kind of new. So the previous owner kind of walked me through that. And she told me the you can turn the kiln off when it or open the kiln when it gets to 130 degrees. Well, I thought that meant I had to be there when it got down to 130 degrees. <laughs> and I'm sure you all know that nothing cools slower like a watch kiln. Right. So I on it, like I didn't live far away from where my studio was. So I just kept going in the middle of the night to check because I was like, I need to be there. I thought that was I thought I had to be there to press the stop button or it would just like start over again or something. Like oh, I didn't, no, no. So at one point it finally just was like, hey, let's stop driving there and let's just sleep at the studio. Oh, <laughs> and no. my mom was like, hey, well, you're not doing that by yourself. So she came with me and we had a party room that had like bench seats. So uh, we slept on the benches so that I could be there for the kiln to <laughs> down, which turns out you do not need to be there for. So I, <laughs> well, you've learned that. I way. learned the hard way. But I was like thinking, oh my God, what have I gotten myself into? Like I have to do this for every kiln fire. Like, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh we all have things we've learned, you know. Oh my goodness. Yes. I've learned many, many kiln things. So I have a scud as well. Actually, I have two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got, I have, so I have the scud KM 1227, which is the one that my studio had when I took it over, which is pretty standard for other paint your own pottery studios. But I, now I'm not firing anywhere near that qu quantity of work. Um, so I always was thinking, you know, if there was ever like a smaller kiln that came up that was used, like I'd be all over that. So I found one last summer um, and it's in my basement and I have not yet used it. <laughs> and <laughs> but you have it. Once, I, once I got it home, I was like, oh, this is not that much smaller than the one that I had, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, I think it's, right. a, it's a 10, 10, 10, 16 or something. If that, Mm -hmm. sounds right I don't know but um, how many kinds oh so many kinds yeah and then when I moved out to Alberta uh, I brought my kiln with me from the studio but I had to convert it from a three phase to a one phase so um I'm just I don't know how many people are going to be in the market for that but uh anyways I have two kilns I only use one but they don't go bad so if I, I ever decide to downsize I could try and sell it <laughs> that's right somebody there's a home for every kiln you know yes and especially like during covid that's where everyone started doing it right, right so that's that's what i ended up finding so i actually got a pottery wheel as well which again i've not used but that was just because i was so busy with market prep um with other work before uh like after i got it but um yeah it was a woman that was into pottery before and then during covid she just got it used and then decided i don't have time for this anymore so um yeah, there was a lot of people responding to her ad, but I just happened to be the closest and able to get there first. So oh, wow. I was very lucky. Exciting. Yeah. And she had so many other things too. She's like, I've got all this clay. Do you want it? I'm like, well, what are you going to do with it? She's like, I'm going to throw it out. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> <So> <laughs> right. I got like a bunch of bats. I got um, like one of those Giffen grips. I got mm. some Amoco glazes, some clay, like wow. oh, so much. Then I had to drive home with it from BC to Alberta. Oh, <laughs> oops. That's okay. It worked out. It fit. It was just a very full car. Yes. So I'm just doing, as we started, as we were chatting, I just started doing my second coat of peach party. So you get the idea of how this works. So maybe what I'll do after this coat's dried, I will uh, start working on the blueberry bubble gum. Um, <laughs> so you can see how how that works, how I paint that part. Um, but yeah, this is just a fun project. Nice little kind of beachy theme. Um, if you wanted to, you could add more turtles. Like I said earlier, uh, when you print out the templates, you could just print them at like different percentage of the size. So you could do like 100%, you could do 
80 percent 50 percent which will just print out um, different sizes of the design and then you could add those in how you'd like so you could do like a school of fish around the side um you could do like smaller fish you could do more coral like that's what's fun. You can kind of change it up however you'd like. So if you were a studio and you were offering this, you could just have a bunch of different printouts for people and then they could kind of play around and make it their own way. You could even like cut out each individual if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to, but like have like a pile of different size turtles and fish. And then that way they just take the tissue paper and transfer it on like with smaller stencils rather than one big sheet of paper with the whole design. Um, so lots of different ways that you could do that. So with Jungle Gems in a Studio, um, we could thought we could talk a little bit about how people handle that. Like how do they mm -hmm. price it? So some people, lots of different ways. I'm sure there's a million different ways that people can do it, but these are some of the more common ways that we've heard about. Some people will actually sell the jars because oh. they don't want people to always hoard all the crystals out of one, you know? Right, right, right. So they may sell the jars and may, then maybe just double the price of the you know, their cost or even more. That's called keystoning when you just double it, um, you know, because you don't have to make a ton of that because you're already, you know, charging to fire mm -hmm. the piece, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but another way is some people will upcharge just a little bit. So they may say, okay, here's a small piece. It's this amount. Or here's a bigger piece. Here's this amount. And that helps cover your cost too. Mm -hmm. um, and then another way is just not even adding anything. Don't add any extra fees, just fire it because you're not having to clear glaze that. So you're saving mm -hmm. some time too. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways that people do that, but I thought it's nice to, to bring it up. If anybody has any ideas that they do differently, we'd love to hear that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's smart. I, I like the way that, or the suggestion that you just said about how, if you don't have to clear glaze it, it's no extra work. So just include right. that as part of, that's what we did. Um, when Dang. I had my studio, just so that it, it's just like no extra charge to use it, I guess. Yeah. And people don't like having all the extra charges, you know? I mean, I think they don't mind it if they buy the jars, you know, depending on your area, mm -hmm. everybody's mm -hmm. different, but you know, constant charges that could be tough in some markets, I think, you know? Right. Yeah. And I did have some, so that some customers that liked one glaze so much, like I had one lady, um, she did so many Christmas trees. So she just like bought a bottle and, and of the, mm -hmm. the uh, yeah. bottle, bottle green <laughs> um, right. she took that home with her and uh just painted them at home and then just kept it so if she wanted to because that was like her gift for her kids every her grandkids so mm -hmm. uh, now I'm just noticing as I'm talking <laughs> this edge is kind of sloppy the top of it so I would just take the fan brush and just kind of use the uh the edge of it like that to go around and kind of clean that up a little bit which you can do too, or how you could do a different color at the top if you want to. But uh, I just think because I've got that kind of like around the rim at the bottom that I'll just, I'll just clean that up a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. I always find painting rims so satisfying. Like it's, it's so easy especially when you do it this way. Yeah. With the fan brush like that definitely helps. Makes it makes quick work. Yeah. So if you have a jar that has um, extra crystals in it, which seems like that would never happen because people go crazy over crystals, but <laughs> if you do, you can add those to a foundation glaze and just make, you know, extend the life of your crystals too. Oh, or you can use glaze crumbles. That would always be a fun way to do them too. Mm -hmm. Now, if you made glaze crumbles, would those just like, would they stay dry or like separate or would they just like melt into? They would separate? melt into because they're not a, it's just, they would be just glaze. Whereas the crystals are actually little pieces of frit. So ah, it's a little different. Yeah. Okay. Little chunks. You can, I don't know. Can you see that on the camera as well? But you can see all those extra. Yeah. No, they are down there. Down there. Yep. So that's what Chris Chris is talking about. Now, um, I love I love the the jungle gyms, obviously, but I like to um the oh come on, Lindsay, what's the name of them? The it's clear glaze, but they have the like, cascade. Oh, spectacular? 
it's a clear. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> yes, those are fun too, because then if you yeah. have a, like a plain stroke and coat color, you can do those um, spectaclears on top of it and it's clear, mm -hmm. but then it's got um, little colors in those as well. So you can add, add a little something extra on top. Yeah, those are fun. Yes, that's just right. another fun option. Those are super fun. All right, I'm going to get my uh, blueberry bubble gum ready. So I'm just going to clean up my peach party, but just for time's sake, Let's pretend it's like TV and that part's done. <laughs> it's not, but we're just going to speed things along. As for me, it's only 6.30, but for some of you, it's 8.30 or later or earlier in the day. So tomorrow. Yeah, we have a fair amount of guests from uh, the other side of the world that will have to watch this another day. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I can't imagine staying up that late. All right. So I just did the same thing. I just like to shake up my uh, my bottle before I use it. And now I'm going to I'm going to start with the um, liner brush because I'm going to work around the coral first. Oh, that's probably so silly of me to paint that ring. Oh, OK. So that's what I love about mugs and pots is that if you're working on one pot, and and plus these ones have a hole in the bottom so you can kind of put your finger there so you can hold it that's my favorite way so that you can keep working if things are uh wet so you don't have to be too too worried about whether your um blueberry bubble gum jungle gem lines up like completely beside your coral color you can have like a little bit of clearance if you'd like but we were talking about that earlier. I like that because it kind of looks like the grout in between the mosaic piece. So I'm just going around all these details first with um, the liner brush, and then I'll go back in with um, a smaller fan brush, like I've got the number four or um, the round brush. Oh, here's Basil. Here you can say hi. There she is. Here's hi, Basil. Basil. <laughs> She always just likes to come and check out what I'm doing. I, it's funny, I curled my hair today and I had a shower, so I dried my hair too. And that is like her cue to think that I'm about to go out somewhere. So she was really nervous staring at me thinking I was leaving. And I just said, nope, not going anywhere. Uh -huh. I'm just going to be in the Wait, other room. Thing. She's a cutie. She's a little, she's my little shadow. Yeah, you can jump up on the bed. She's a rascal. <laughs> so the very first time I worked with Mako Krista was when you invited me to talk at Pottery Camp. Mm -hmm. and I was talking about how to take pictures, like branded kind of pictures of your pieces for social media. Mm -hmm. And so I got to paint all the pieces that you were teaching at Pottery Camp. And oh, right. And Basil had just got back from the groomer. So she was like super zoomy and she ran over one and broke it. And I was like, oh my gosh. I remember I that. So upset. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Like, no, you were so chill. You're like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> Things happen. Of course I built it up as like the worst thing that could have ever possibly happened. <laughs> you were like, oh, that's fine. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't stay long mad at her for too long. That's right. You know how, like, if you were doing stroke and cut, you'd have to really worry about streakies. But, like, with this, you're going to be doing three coats. But also, you're, the way you're applying it, plus the crystals in there, it's not like you have to worry about a lot of streaks in there. You oh, know? which is another reason I like this. Yeah. Part, I noticed that when I took it out, too, because I was like, oh, I, I, was so, I was so sure to take my time with coverage, which I was. But there are some spots that aren't as fully covered, and you really can't tell, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's nice. No, too. it doesn't. It just depends. It's kind of, it's like the watery or whatever look you well, want. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, it works out perfectly. Mm -hmm. It does. Such a cute design. Well, I thought I don't have one, but the little fish have faces, but the turtles don't. So if you wanted mm. to, you could add one on there too. <laughs> yeah. But you could also use like a different jungle gem if you wanted to, or you could use different stroke and coats to do a design on the turtle. Mm -hmm. um, that'd be cool. But um, I would just thought, you know, this is the easiest way work with the smaller color palette, but you could totally add in 
some other elements there if you wanted to on the turtle shell. Have you ever seen like turtle hatchings, Krista? Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Where were you for that? We were on the North Carolina coast on the island where we usually go. It's called Ocean Isle. And this year we saw so many nests and we saw, I saw two turtle hatchings, I think within one week, which is, I guess it was oh the goodness. year that I was there because you don't always get to see them, you know, but if they know that you're a local, the people that are on the turtle patrol will kind of give you a heads up because they know that you won't mm. just come be a pain and get in the way. But oh, it's, they're, so they're serious cool. about it, you know, but it's, oh, it's gosh, really cool. yeah. Well, it's good to see them advocating for. Yeah. Them. Oh, that's so, so cool. cute when they crawl out. Oh, they're so tiny. Oh, my gosh. Um, My boyfriend's oldest brother lives in Australia. Mm. And so his parents went out to travel and see them. And they ended up going to. Mm, Okay, I'm gonna have to think about the name, <laughs> but they ended up going to this other little island by Australia, um, where they went snorkeling and stuff. And they came across. They started talking to this woman who was an underwater photographer. Oh, cool! And uh, yeah, they just got to chat with her and stuff. But she's got incredible videos of like turtles, rays, uh, mm -hmm. oh, jellyfish, seahorse, like so cool. That sounds like a pretty good job. No kidding. So I have a really unfortunate habit when I go like and do fine line <clears throat> work or like when I'm trying not to paint on something, <laughs> I hold my breath so that my hand is steadier. Um, but I don't recommend that. So you have to breathe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But the higher you, like, or the straighter up you hold your brush, the finer line you're going to get. Uh, so especially if you're getting in between, like, really tiny little spaces like that, that's where that comes in handy. Um, or like we were talking about earlier, if you have wax resist, you could just paint over all of these details, and then you don't have to worry about doing this <laughs> you can just paint mm -hmm. it over it and then the glass or the wax will repel the glaze um and then you can just get like a little sponge and clean up on the surfaces of it but um you know what? the first coat like this one like this is kind of like my outline so this i like to do this the first time around so that when i go back in with a bigger brush i can kind of i know you know where i can paint to yeah so it's easier to get it yeah thicker around in there too I like that point about holding your brush up straight that's something we forgot I tend to forget you know yes, and you can get very, yeah you can get very fine lines yeah um right. but um yeah this is oh, sorry this is the um uh, royal lang and lang, lang nickel 10 10 -0 brush so mm -hmm. this is a I like this one too because the bristles are really long on it but I have very very many uh liner brushes you just have to be very kind to them and yeah. not leave them in your water <laughs> yeah. which I'm very guilty of and let them dry flat for sure yes yes mm -hmm. so I have some that are a little wonky so obviously I have better ones that are more cared for that I I use but I had some that were so like I left them in the pot overnight or something and they're so uh -oh. bent but oh, for no. the longest time, they were like the only thin ones that I had. So I just adapted. <laughs> <laughs> that made it a little bit more difficult, but that's okay. Yeah. It is pretty soothing to watch somebody paint. You know, I've never been one to sit and watch Bob Ross, but <laughs> this is like, this is so fun to just watch oh, you paint. I, well, I was just going to say, I was going to say, like, I know everyone's pretty quiet tonight, but if they're enjoying watching it, that. Yeah, really I know. Great. I think it's, but, I think it's. A, but if anyone has it. questions, like for Krista about Mako glazes or anything. like I know it's a, it's a quiet night, a quiet group. It's okay. 
totally fine. I'm running out of water. I need to get some more water. Okay. Well, I'll just be here painting. Around. All right, I'll go get a glass of water. Okay. So I'm almost done with all of these like fine details. I probably would use it up in the wave shape as well, but all the under the water kind of things I'm almost done. So for the um, blueberry bubble gum, when I do it with the peach party, like I'm not going to worry about that gap in between. Like you can even overlap it a little bit um, and they don't, they don't like run into each other, which is, oh, sorry, I keep hitting my camera. Um, but they don't, they don't like mix and run into each other, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about it so much there, but I like to do it around these bigger pieces just in case. Plus I also, like I said, I like to see that terracotta color around it. Cause it's almost like the grout around a piece if it were in a mosaic. There we go. So my peach party at the top is still a little bit um, wet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of my round brushes. Um, no, you know what, I'm gonna use my smaller fan brush and I'm just going to start filling in these larger spaces with that. I just pour mine because I'm the only person using them. I just pour my jungle gems into the lid. Um, but sometimes, you know, if after a long day of painting, I just want to be done with it and I just will scoop out some of the extra paint and put the lid back on. But then with that extra glaze in like the rivets along the side it makes it a little bit harder. So I will say from experience, just take that extra bit of time to, to clear that out so that you can get your bottle open later because that's super frustrating when you can't open a bottle of paint. Or you could just not use the lid and never have to worry about that issue. So the thing that's nice about these fan brushes is that even though like they're wide, like if you hold them on an angle, you can still paint like fine lines. So you can still get around these waves pretty easily. kind of looks a little bit better too once you've got the terracotta covered and you've got that wave color in just finishes it off nicely so just with timing it's 6 49 so maybe i'll just do the one coat of this um because you'll get the idea you don't need to see me paint it two more times but um what's nice about this like krista was saying earlier with the um three coats of the stroke and coat and the jungle gems you don't need to clear glaze them um so i'm not going to worry about clear glazing the inside i'm just going to get this stilted and loaded into a cone 06 firing um i wouldn't dry foot this because or yeah i wouldn't dry foot it to put it on the kiln just because i've got some of the glaze so close um, but I saw this really neat trick on, I mean, it probably originated on TikTok, but I don't have TikTok. So I got it secondhand on Instagram, but someone had a really good idea for if you want to have like a band at the bottom of your pots that doesn't get glazed to use, uh, an elastic band. So just stretch that around the bottom of your piece. Um, and you, if it's like a wider band, you could just have that be like your foot. And then you only paint to that elastic band. And then that way you don't have to like stop and, you know, draw a line on with pencil or be super fidgety about it. Like it's just that elastic's there. You It's covering the pot so you can paint over it and it won't get any glaze underneath it. So um, that's super smart. But if you're doing this as like a class in your studio, um, that's just an awesome way to get pieces fired and in and out of the kiln quickly um, because you don't have to wait for them to be clear glazed. You just stilt them and load them right in the kiln. That's a great idea. So you put the rubber band on there, glaze it, then you pop the rubber band off, obviously, yeah. where you put it in the kiln. Otherwise, it'll melt. That yes. is great. I love that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I mean, you could certainly use it for low fire pieces. I think the intent is that that's for like mm -hmm. stoneware glazes that drip because you have to have that right. Little bit of foot, right? Um, but I saw that and I was like, oh, 
It's so smart. And I was going to have an elastic to show you. And then I forgot. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I think you can, can visualize Yeah, we that. get that. Um, yeah, I thought that was such a super easy hack. Because I know, um, I think when I, I mean, I didn't off offer stoneware in my studio for very long. But I remember Brie taught that you could just like put a pencil like mm -hmm. on your table and then just spin mm -hmm. your pot around and then it would draw a line and then you just don't paint past that. Um, right. But the elastic is like a physical barrier. So that's a good way to do it too. Yeah, I want to try that. So how often do you use your kiln, Krista? Like, is it just for Mako samples or do you paint pieces for yourself? Um, I use it for Mako samples. And then I also do stoneware mugs for a local farmer's market with your local that. that's so cool yeah a friend of mine does handles all the merch for their market and so I do the mugs for her because she sells other things to have the logo on it oh I love that yeah, yeah oh, so they're just so really cool. fun glaze combinations and I get all the ideas off the Mako website and sometimes I try some of my own but there's so many on there it just makes it easy oh oh that's so cool yeah so how many mugs do you think you make each month well it's only it's she doesn't go as much as she used to now. They've they've cut oh, back okay. some. So I don't I don't know. The last time I made a whole bunch, I made like twelve and delivered them to her. But then they stopped going for a little bit because it was mm. cold and all that. <laughs> oh, fair. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So do you make them with Mako stoneware mugs, or do you throw them on the wheel or hand build? I them? use them Mako stoneware mugs. Oh. oh my gosh, I feel so silly for never having asked you that before. <laughs> That's okay. That's cool. We're always talking about other things. That's true. We always have lots to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> now this makes me want to go get a terracotta pot. Yes. And, like honestly, they're everywhere right now. Yeah. <laughs> Tis the season. That's right. I am really excited to see all the like plant seeds and stuff out too. That yeah. Gets me excited. But I mean, we never really know when spring's actually going to come in Calgary because you could get a Chinook and it's like plus 10 one day and like minus 20 the next. So, right. That's crazy. It makes it difficult to plant things. But um, I had a little like, like those indoor terrariums where you like start your seeds. Mm -hmm. Oh, neat. I think, I think I did it a little late. And we also just do not have much space in our kitchen to like put them by the window. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I would like to be a little bit more on top of it this year. But I'm excited to, we have like a patch, like at the side of our house, like we, when we walk our dog, we walk her and we walk through the back door instead of the front door. So we have to walk beside the house and the pre previous owner had just put like mulch there, but it's basically all gone now with all the raking of leaves and just foot traffic and stuff. So, um, it gets kind of muddy this time of year where it's like the snow is melting. So we want to put, um, it's called creeping thyme, mm -hmm. kind of like a grass, but it, like it grows like a grass, but it, it's a ground cover too. So, um, mm. we're going to try and put that down this year so that we don't bring so much mud into the house. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Our dog is very sweet, but she hates having her paws wiped. Yeah. Her feet is, are like sponges. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm almost done. But I was just saying, Krista, I think I'm just going to do the one coat for tonight so that people yeah. can get off and get their, their night finished with. But um, all the pictures that um, I believe they're sent out with um, like the design tech or bleh, technique sheets and all that. Um, but all the photos that are included, like I've got a couple videos as well. If you want to advertise with for your social media, for your studio, um, you are more than welcome to use those if you wanted to do a class. Um, I mean, it's always great to paint the piece yourself so that you can kind of help people through it. Um, so if you have a chance to make a sample, I would definitely recommend that. But if you want to get advertising, you can use those, those marketing materials and, and start before you get your own sample made. But um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, I like this project. I think I think it'd be good for all ages. I mean, you could probably eliminate some of the finer detail things if it's like really little kids. But um, I think I think that was what I liked about owning my studio is that you did get a lot of, especially like teens and stuff who want to take their time and not rush through pieces. <laughs> so I think this is a good one for them. Plus you can make it into other things. If you take this design and flip it upside down, you can make like a little bird bath. That'd be super cute. Um, now, when you did 
like the fountains that you had, Krista, did you glue your pieces together after, or did you stack them in the kiln and let them fuse together? Uh, it depended on the piece, you know, sometimes, you know, there could, could be a little movement in there. So, right, right, right. Um, but uh, some of the bigger ones I would fuse together and then the small little elements I might glue on after. That's smart. Yeah. But that's just a really good, easy way to upsell your customers too, is just to yeah, upsell or if there's Even items that aren't Paint selling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for right. sure. So I've got one coat of the oh maybe what i'll do real quick i'll just do some of the details on um one of the little fish that i've got there just so you can see how i do that but otherwise here is the pot a little mosaic <clears throat> excuse Thank me you. a little mosaic earthworks pottery in barbados inspired terracotta pot um i love it i think it's so cute i'm biased but yeah. <laughs> i like that <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to real quick, I'm going to do some details on this fish just so you can see. So I've done these before, so I kind of know what kind of shape to do. But if you want, you could just grab a pencil. I mean, this isn't totally dry, so I don't want to push too hard. Um, but you could just sketch on like the design lines that you need to have. So this one's kind of got like the outline of the fish. And then his little... Fins on top. He's got one underneath. And his tail. His face. And then all those fins and eye. And of course, a little smile. So I'm going to use the designer liner. No, oh my gosh, not. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm going to use the liner brush and I'm going to use, I'm going to use the awkward for this one. So I'm just going to paint over those lines and uh, get that detail on there so that it's got little uh, little scales, fins, and a smile. I'll just do it on the one, but I would also do it on the other one um, later. But just so you can see, so I've got a little eye, a little smile. Little fins, and then remember just the straighter you're able to hold your brush, um, the finer lines you'll be able to get. Unfortunately for me, I've got the camera right above my brush, so I can't hold it super straight, but that's okay. You really could use designer liner, that'd be cute too, because it yeah, comes you could, yeah, colors, you just would want to make sure that it's like yeah. super dry. Um, you could right. also, I were chatting earlier, but you could do French dimensions on those. Um, you could even do like French dimensions, like as like a border between the wave and the top of them so that you've got like a physical barrier for when you're painting in between. To yeah. Kind of right. it. So the first time when I did this project, there were colored French dimensions, but now there's just black and white, but you could also paint over the white too. So. That yeah. just adds a more textural element to the piece, which is always something I like incorporating. I just think it's fun because most times when you work with ceramic, ceramic glazes, like they fire flat, right? Not, well, not right. They're not textured. So I like finding ways to incorporate that uh, into a typically fat medium. So that's um, that's why I like adding beadwork kind of things with clay to... Yeah. There we go. So I'm almost done. One last chance to ask Krista questions about Mako if you have them. <laughs> <laughs> and go check out Lindsay's website. Lindsay Mar Studio is so, so many oh, great things. Okay. It's kind of empty right now. I haven't really, I was away for so long in the beginning of the year and I got cleared out after markets. And also I just got to the point too, where I just like, our, my house is so filled with pottery that I'm like, oh, I just can't paint anymore until I try and get rid of this <laughs> So I'm actually excited though, because um, tomorrow I'm going to paint for myself a tea canister, a flower canister, and a sugar canister. Oh, good for you. And like, I never actually paint things for myself. So I'm very excited to do that. <laughs> That's great. All right, there we go. So there's the little details on the fish. Oh, it's so cute. Awkward. But there we go. Like I'll give you a little, little tour around. But there we go. There is 
beach party pot. Actually, I called this Turtle Beach because it had a turtle on it. So. Yeah. And there we so go. So cute. My hands Thanks, are messy. Lindsay? A mess, but that was fun. Thank you so much. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about anything? If not, we're just glad y'all came and thank yeah, you so thank much, you for Lindsay. Joining. If you if yeah. you do paint pieces, if you paint your own, I'd love to see them. You can send them to me on Instagram or mm -hmm. uh, my Instagram's Lindsay Mars Studio, but you can send them to me there, or tag me or something. I just I'd love to see. I always love to see how people take a project and then like stick to it, but add their own artistic flair to it. I love that. So I'd yes. love to see if you ever get around to painting them. All right. All right. Thank you all so much. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.